Hello and welcome into the SoRare Data Strategy Show. I am Andrew Laird. You can find me as Lairdinho on SoRare. Joined as always by Sean Newsham, PSU fans too. Today to talk about Lionel Messi. Oh, I said the quiet part out loud. Sean, we were literally talking yesterday, like late yesterday, about how there are no good forwards in Asia and there are really not that many good ones in America. And now the greatest player of all time tells us, hey, I'm coming. What do you think? Yep. It, it's it's very interesting. I uh, I mean, look, Argentinian Gill is like now going to be in the MLS, and that makes things interesting. Um, I, I mean, I, I think that's the first topic, part of the conversation. We can talk about it. Um, so what is your overall thoughts on this situation? Because I think we're similar. Maybe not. Maybe so, we're not. Similar. So what's your thoughts? So the, what, the, the thing that you actually said this today in one of the discords we're in, and you were like, I'm just not sure if Messi can get that much better. And I don't think it matters because he's already the best player in the game. And so like, no, if you I, I agree go from the that. best player in the game to the best player in the game, like, yeah, that's fine. That's, that's literally what I said, Laird. Oh, is that what you said? I'm sorry. Yeah. I feel like everybody was like, does this make like making a big deal of it? And you're like, he can't get much better. I took that as like, maybe he's not worth it because he's like not getting any better. But like, if you can't get better because you're the best, then that's a different- By the way, I don't know if you have seen, but people are paying over one ETH for his rare now. Oh man. People, they... people, two people have paid one ETH for his rare in the last five minutes, Laird. I was going to say, because I saw, oh my God, they really did. They I did. saw that nobody had bought one in a few days. And then I saw, yeah, 10 hours ago, I saw 0.63. And then, yeah, 0. 0.78. And then 1.0 and 1.09. Floor is now 1.5 ETH. Yep. Sean, I'm up on Messi now. How about that? You are. You are. Quinny just asked. The real question is, can Messi do it on a Wednesday night in Salt Lake City, Utah? That's a valid question. But, so, yeah, I mean, I, here's my opinion, right? So, like, people are are pumped. And they're they're super excited about the situation. And... and, and that, that's fine. I think that's reasonable. To me, and I think you agree with this, he just went from the best player on the platform that you can play in Champ Europe to the best player on the platform that you play in Global All-Star. Right? I I mean, were you, you not playing play in Global All-Star? All-Star? But you know what I mean. I said yeah, can. Yeah. I said can. I mean, I didn't, sure, I didn't sure, think sure. have to. So, like, here's, uh, here's my issue with it is, like, I don't think he gets better. Per- Everyone, uh, Everyone's like, oh, my God, Messi's going to crush it. And it's like... I don't think people understand, like, when you – PSG, he's on one of the best teams in the world playing against a bunch of shit bags, right? Like, he's just taking dumps on him every game. He's just all over the place. Like, he's just smacking him. He's now going to a league where his teammates are shit bags, and his opposition is also shit bags. So you just took him from one of the best teams in the world, best team in the league that dominates everyone, to worst team in the league that gets dumped on by everyone. Now – He's still going to smash because he's literally – I was I was saying, like, the guys that he's going up against, the defenders, a lot of them, they're, like, fourth-tier, fifth-tier English-type defenders. Like, they're just not good. You you think Sebastian Abegba is, is like, higher than that? I, but there are better ones in MLS. Like There are. There are. I mean – Walker Zimmer in the deal with at some point, I'm sure. sure. Yeah, they play Nashville. Sure. See? How about that? Sure. So, but here's the thing is like, he's going to smack him. He's going to run, he's going to run uh, circles around some of them, but th- his teammates are terrible. Like, he, like what his best, his best teammate is probably DeAndre Yedlin. Sean. Yeah. Name one good player on the New England Revolution, not named Carlos Hill. Georgia Petrovic, who you hate. He's, he's quite good, Laird. Reg- okay. He's, I'll, okay. I will give you that he is the best player on the planet and he's not helping Carlos heal. Okay. Noel Buck is pretty good. Yeah, exactly. Noel Buck. How about that? All right. So if we have, if Carlos heal can deal with Noel Buck as his best outfield Correct. for me, I think Messi's I'm not saying, good. yeah, I'm not saying Messi's going to be bad. Like I'm not saying Messi's going to be bad, but like people are like, Oh my God, Messi's going to be great. It's like, what do yeah, you Daniel Cooper know who's going to lock him down. Like, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Like Messi, like Messi's not going to average ninety nine points a game. Like he's just not. He's going to probably. He, I would say for PSG and Barca, he is like a 
80 average player, 75 to 80 average player. Going to enter Miami, he's probably a 75 to 80 average player, which again, what you mentioned, best card on the platform. Yep. So he's still the best card on the platform. He's still going to be great. He's still going to put up hundreds and he's still going to be a massive producer. Cause like he's going to, anytime he gets like a, a decisive, he's going to be like on 80 to 90 at minimum. Right. He's going to have such great A. So like maybe, maybe he'll, maybe he'll eclipse that. Maybe he'll be an 85 average player. I just don't think the point really changes. Like he just went from being the best player on the platform that you could play in champ Europe to the best player on the platform that you can play in champ America, which is obviously not as appealing as, as the best player you can play in champ Europe, but it's going to be difficult to compete in global all-star divisions without him. Harry trade just said Busquets and Alba are to join him. If that happens, like interesting, but like, I don't, there's nothing interesting about that. If there are two players that like will just get blown off the field, it's in MLS. It's those no, guys. Alba. Alba's okay. Alba. Alba's okay. Busquets, like, yeah, that one I wouldn't really be interested in as much. But Busquets I has a skill set that just, that works in so many places and in MLS. You know what his problem is? What is that? Other than Messi, like he's going to look up and be like, "Oh, somebody should be running here. I'll pass it there." And he's going to look up and there's nobody there. Oh yeah, that's that's thing is like people are like Messi's just gonna get so many decisive. I'm like, have you seen the bums he's playing with? Like literally, second best player on the team is like DeAndre Yedlin. He's gonna play this amazing through ball, and someone's gonna fall on their face. Mark Alele just said before the game or before the show started that Joseph Martinez is gonna bang. I'm like, yeah, Joseph No Knees Martinez is definitely gonna bang. But like, I mean, he probably will. He probably gonna he probably up, will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably put up thirty. He's probably gonna lead the league in goals. He's probably put up yeah. like thirty or forty goals. But I mean. <laughs> I don't know. Like, to me, it's a great, great card. Like, I want it. It's it, it could be very difficult to compete in competitions that Lionel Messi can compete in. But that was already the case. Like, it hasn't really changed. Like, Lionel Messi is still really good. And he's now just still really good. Like, maybe he moves up a little bit. Like, maybe he's an 80 average player, 85 average player. If he's an 85 average player. Like, it's difficult to compete if, you're, if this dude's averaging 85 a game and you don't have him. But there's still going to be weeks where you get a guy that gets that. Yeah. Uh, so there are a ton of comments here. Thank you, everybody, for joining and for the comments already. Like the video. David Alves says at least Campana is going to be benched. He won't. I think he's going to be the one that Messi keeps trying to throw toss balls into at the top. He is. Do they have three? Do they have three designated players? I assume it's was Pizarro one. Uh, maybe players? I'm trying to check. I don't know. I mean, I know well, Joseph Martinez has to be one, right? I don't know. Uh, I want to go back to this comment, though. Um, Quinny's comment, can Messi do it on a Wednesday night in Utah? Just to look at the schedule that he will play, like where he actually will play. And I think the expectation is he, if he starts essentially like right away, uh, we have the League's Cup that he'll also have to play in. But in terms of like MLS games... They've got, they play St. Louis July 15th, which somebody was saying like could be the, like when they announce it, but he's, I don't think he's going to play that. The next MLS game is not for another month. Home against Charlotte. So he's basically at Charlotte, the Red Bulls, Nashville, at LAFC, Sporting Kansas City, Atlanta United, which I believe is the first turf game. So we'll see if he actually wants to play on turf. Uh, home against Toronto, at Orlando, New York City FC, Chicago, home against Cincinnati, and then at Charlotte, which I think all of those are, grass like this is now what we think and i actually that doesn't quite segue me into a different conversation because i don't want to actually go there yet but part of this conversation or really the the topic of this show came about because uh, a a friend of ours is looking for a new america region forward and this is before the messy and i'm not going to call them out and it's not tuggy i'll say that and he is essentially asking as many people as he can to convince him or to, to agree with him that he should go after the, one of the dustiest players in Major League Soccer who happens to play in LA, in LA and is not Chicharito. And all of us are like, no, you can't do that. But it opened up the conversation of like, what do you do in the summer for a forward? And eventually someone's like Savarino, and now he could be going to Brazil. And that's where we came with this. We were like, maybe you should go to Asia. Well, how many good Asia forwards are there? Two, maybe three. 
And it just got really ugly. And like I said, Messi's coming in to save the day. Yep. I mean, definitely. Oh, so I did find. All right. So their designated players are Pizarro, who like, I just feel like they're going to get rid of Pizarro. So that's probably the one that goes, right? Like that's got to be the one that goes. Gregor and <laughs> and Campana. Those are the three DPs. Right. So, well, they have to get rid of one because I assume Messi's going to be like, yeah. knowing yeah. MLS, they will find a way to make it so that he's not a DP and it's all fine. But Yeah, who knows? But yeah, that, I, I think Pizarro just finds his way. Because Summer doesn't have, I'm not going to say cheat code. Summer doesn't have elite level players. And the reason because is, is the MLS is just a very high league in terms of parity. Everyone's similar-ish. Like, yeah, there's obviously better teams and worse teams, but like you don't have a PSG that's a five-goal favorite against a team. You have like pretty much every team in the MLS, if they're on the road, is an underdog is pretty much how it is with like a few exceptions, right? Like if you have inner Miami and they are at home against LAFC, like LAFC might be favored or might be inner Miami. Like it'll be close, but yeah. like in, in other leagues, like you have, if you have Ajax away at Volendam, like Ajax is the, a huge favorite, but that's not the case in the MLS. Um, and Asia is pretty similar. Like there's not too much discrepancy. Like if, I mean, Marinos is home this week. Who I think Marinos is the best team in the league. I think they're better than Vissel Kobe. And they're probably like a goal favorite or something against um, against Ray Sol, who's like probably the second worst team in the league. I would say yeah. like they're they're not the worst, but like they're the second worst. But like you have you have two big um, you have one really bad team, and that's probably Yokohama. Yokohama is probably the worst team in, in Gamba's pretty bad Japan. Gamba's pretty bad too. That's true. Uh, but like, so you have a couple bad teams there. But like, if you look, they're still not like the hu most huge favorites of all time. Um, but so <clears throat> I just wanted to do this quickly though. I want to talk about who the actual elite players are in the summer. I think that's because we were talking like the list ends, and this is sure. So it's basically let's keep it just to Asian America because we'll, we'll get into the whole Euros thing in sure. a little bit. But all right, do we want to go by position? I think it's, I think it's a good discussion. Do we want to go by position? Let's go. Let's go by position and see how many people we think are elite players. I don't even think we need to do. Well, I, that's fine. I put Gil actually, and I not even put on him. Like, there are zero goalies. I'm not even willing to have a conversation about it. I would argue. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, the 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 real answer is there's no goalies, right? But I wish we could sort on sober data on like the player's ranking page between like American and Asia. That would be fun. Yeah. Both um, I would argue that you could throw in like, yeah, I, I'm with you. I just, you just, <laughs> who are you I'm thinking with, of? Yeah, I, I'm with you. I mean, if you want to throw someone, you maybe could, but yeah, I would probably pass on, on goalies. All right. So elite level. Who, the, who was the goalie you were considering? I don't know. Like Armani or Ichimori or something. I don't know, but they're none of them are elite. Yeah. You just want to play matchups. Um, defender. There's only one that even came to mind. I'm thinking you're, I'm assuming you're thinking Kai Wagner. No, but actually he should be on the list probably. It, yeah. So like, I don't think I would put any of the like Argentinos juniors guys on the list. McAllister um, was the only one that I like considered. You were thinking Torin or, or Villalba? No, I was actually thinking McAllister. Who? I think McAllister's been better lately. He's oh. also never hurt. But so, like, I mean, realistic options I think you put there you would discuss would be like Wagner. I think you would consider Giannetti if healthy. I wouldn't. I mean, we're talking about elite. Like, that's what that's kind of my point is that, like, yeah, we have to, like, you know, you know, who's an elite guys I feel like should come right to mind. You know, who probably deserves to be there is Marlon. Does he have new cards though? I mean, uh, obviously it doesn't he matter if he has new cards. He has cards. Yeah. All right. Um, I, I think he would belong on the list. Oh yeah, I Ron Romero saying Sasaki. Sasaki probably deserves it. See, I don't know about Sasaki. Like, if you're saying Sasaki, you you have to say like the Argentinos Junior guys. You have to say like Hatanaka. You'd have to say like Eduardo. I'm willing like, to put him off. Yeah, like, yeah, on. like look, so, all right, you add him, we can take him off. So, like, add yeah. him, add Hatanaka. Who's the other one? 
probably Eduardo if Eduardo's Eduardo. like locked in. Eduardo's just yep. really good if he's actually playing. Yep. Daniel Alves said Ayrton. I don't know what Ayrton's been doing. Yeah, definitely not Ayrton. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I would include him. No, no chance. No chance. Well, I put the wrong Marlin in. Sorry. Um, did you add Ty Wagner? I think you should add Ty Wagner, and then we can take it off. Yeah, hold on. Let me take the wrong Marlin off. Oh no! I and I, I will say, I do think we're like we're like Pip. stretching stuff on all of these guys, right. right? All of the defenders. All right, midfield. Well, oh, actually, you know, I might have one more to to add, and that's Alexander Schultz. Oh yeah, that's a good call. Schultz, Schultz is Schultz. Probably, yeah. That's his name's pretty good too. Um, Grant Alexander Grant, but I don't think he's elite. No, Schultz is definitely better. Okay, anyway, mid Carl, Carlos Hill. I'm going to give you the ones that immediately came to my mind: Carlos yeah. Hill, Zellerion, and that was it. Well, you have to. Almada's got to be there until he leaves. Yeah, I was always hesitant on Almada because I just assumed he's gone. But for now, sure. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I agree with that. And then you have to add in Hani because people will lose their mind. Who? Mukhtar. Oh, I think you said Tani at first. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You have to add in Alexander Alvarado. But here, here's the funny story for you. Do you know who owns his unique? I know it's Andy Black, and he played him in the academy. And he can wasn't you believe? Yeah, games. I told Andy Black that I'm like, I don't understand how you – you don't sell this card. Like so, the dude's L15 is 72. There's no way someone wouldn't give him a shitload for that, that he just could use elsewhere. Um. So, so Surface you're cutting. Thing. I do want to address this. Hold on. Sorry. So when you're discussing elite, don't you have to consider context? You're thinking in terms of the 12 month calendar, but perhaps it's worth considering just summer. This is just summer. This is just summer. And like yeah. these, if you're if we're saying elite in the summer, that means they're still like really damn good elsewhere. Right. Like I so like you are leaving out because I know the next group, and I think that you're leaving them out. I think you're probably correct. You don't want to include like Gold, Acosta, Lodero, or Reynoso. Correct. Andy Black, I have no interest in Alvarado, but I'm sure somebody does. Um okay. That's fair. I don't think there's anyone else then that I would add to that list. Let me let me check Asia to make sure. Not Suda would have been there, but not Suda has yeah. been horrendous. Agreed. And Romelu would have been there, but Romelu's dead. Yeah, he's dead now. Um, Shin Jin Ho would have been there too, but he's also dead. No, he he's coming back though. Oh no, I'm he thinking of Son, really I'm good. thinking of Son Jun Ho. Sorry, I'm thinking of the guy that was in China that now is going to like Taiwan or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, I probably wouldn't add anyone in in Asia. Yep. All right. So forwards, definitely to see. Yeah, it's Felix in senior. Asia. Sessi, do you want to add Davidson or no? Because in China, he's been injured the last couple of games too. No, I don't. Okay, that's it then. That's it in Asia and America. I wish I had a cricket. Sound. I mean, I don't think I want to add Rubio. No. I assume you don't want to add Rubio. I don't want to add Cucho. But Cucho kind of makes sense. Maybe you have to add Cucho. I don't know. He just hasn't played enough games yet. Cucho's been really good. I, I would be open to the option of Cucho. And then I think you add Insigne. I would not. But you're skipping the guy I would definitely add. You? I wouldn't add Quinones. No, Hulk. Oh, yeah, I guess I would add Hulk, and you probably have to include Vela, but that's gross. I don't. The Vela thing is, I mean, Vela's the one who started this. I, I, I don't look at this at all and think this guy is one of the best players here. I think you probably are hating on Insigne a little bit because in, in his starts, his he's averaged 65. Felix was, says Buwanga. I don't think Buwanga gets. Yeah, you're not a Buwanga guy. No, I like Buwanga. I like Buwanga for what he is, but like you look at Buwanga, the AA is not fantastic a lot of the time. Like, 
I just think Bulonga's not on the I list. Think I'm I'm completely biased, but I think Quinones is better than Bulonga. I don't disagree with that, and I also don't think he's on the list. That's fine. Yeah. Andy's saying if Insigne gets on, then Bulonga has to. I don't think that's true, though. And JVIC League's Cup is considered the summer. League's Cup is in the summer. That is true. Yeah, I mean, if you look at it... Insane, Cucho should probably be on the list as much as I like and just like, eh, whatever. In 20 starts with Toronto, Insigne is averaging 65. He's been below 45 10% of the time. He's been 80 or above, like... 35% of the time. I don't know. Cucho, I'm open to. Yeah, I'll like, put Cucho on the list. Just yeah, we can reassess. I don't think there's anyone else. I think that's like... I think that's as much as we could do. Ben is saying Quinones is not a summer player, but I'm pretty sure League MX starts June 30th. July feels like summer to me. Yeah. I mean, again, I don't think Quinones is on the list. I don't think... Dinano or Preciado are good enough for yeah, this list. I agree. Or Brunetta. If you're going to consider Preciado, you have to consider Brunetta. Not a, I don't put him on this list. Yeah, I think Brunetta is a discussion point to some extent, but there's too many question marks around Brunetta. I think he was just kind of a false mirage at the beginning. I, I wouldn't put Brunetta on the list. Oh, yes, you can put Messi on the list. There you go. Daniel Cooper, all about Daniel Cooper, making sure we added Messi. Yeah. So that's pretty much it. And I would, I would argue half of this list we struggled for. So the reason why Messi becomes so important is midfield's pretty deep. Mm -hmm. Defender is not, but it's also because it's so light, it might not matter. Correct. Goalies, whatever. And literally, the forward list is. Let me just uh the forward list is Cecinia, Cucho, Insignia, and Hulk. Yeah. And like Cucho, I don't want to play in a lot of situations. Right. Like I and you can pretend Buanga's on the list too if you guys really want to do that. I'm not gonna put him on, but and this yeah, is a public I... list now, by the way. You can just title is Summer Elites. Go and follow it if you want. I just think it's, yeah, because I mean, you look at this list, right? And you see, like, Cecenia. There's a, there's a major Korean issue that we all know about that it's been better. It's been better. I, it's been better, but, I like... Don't wanna, so I was talking about this with someone who also has a lot of Korea cards and is, like, buying into Korea, like I've been. And it's one of those that it, the, the cards are cheaper, but the risk is... You just have to, like, understand... That at any moment, the game might not get scored. Correct. And so if you're willing to go in with that and you realize that you will lose some game weeks because of it, go nuts. And I would say, what would you say? Like every week, every week with Korea, my opinion is I have like a 10% chance it doesn't get scored. I think it's lower than that, to be honest. It might be. It might be like five. But it's it's certainly more than one. Yes. It's and the like, problem it's... is always that we just never know. Correct. Like it's like, not a stadium M thing. It's not a date thing. Like MLS is like 99.9% .9 sure that like you'll get a game covered, right? Like there's, we have yet to see a situation 99.999% that you're going to get it covered. Korea really is like, the issue. What? Weather becomes the issue. Yeah. Korea is like five. It's like five. It's like 5%. Yep. And, and that's, Higher it's a lot everyone. more than everyone else. Like, I will give a good example. This weekend, Sassini has a really favorable matchup. And I'm looking at it, and I'm like, do I really want to play Sassini in my gas three line? I don't know. I don't know if I want to. I mean, you want to. I want to, but I also don't know if I want to. Yeah. Well, he also could rotate, too, because, I mean, he's been having injury issues this year, and he definitely um, – could sit, I would say, or rotate to some extent, but he's back. He's back healthy, so who knows? So I'm looking at the Mer America forward list, and there are five players who averaged more than 60 in their last 40. One of which has not played in the last, or bar has barely played in the last 15 with Rubio, who's yeah. first. 
and like, Savarino may leave. And Savarino may leave, right. Um, Ra so where Raul at added Suarez. I'm assuming he's talking Luis, and if he's talking Luis, absolutely not. He, I saw some stat about Suarez the other day. I forget what it was, though. I don't know what other Suarez he could be talking about. No, it is, it is him. But yeah, I mean, he's yeah, absolutely not. Yeah. I, I wouldn't even put him in like the good category. Yeah. Is he hurt now? Subbed off injured. Shocking. Yeah. So yeah, I think it's just, I think he makes you appreciate how, although I say how deep midfield is and we have the exact same number, but I think these guys are also much better than. The forwards. Right. Well, I also think like, right. All right. So, so you look at the forward, let's go back to the forward list real quick. Right. Okay. Um, Messi, we're not going to talk about because he's not there yet. So we're just going to leave that one out there. So senior Korean issue has constant injury issues, has a load of injury issues. Uh, Cucho. You, sorry to cut you off there, but you're right. The Cecenia injury stuff is real. Like it is. And Cucho, like, I don't know. Like I'm not super interested in that per se. He could leave too. He could leave. Insigne has a lot of issues in terms of that team, the dumpster fire. They are having issues there. He, he was also take, just hurt. He takes some DNP sometimes. He's not on all the sets with Bernardeschian, which is definitely a, a issue. Um, so that's an issue. All right. And then who was the last one we had there? Um, Hulk. Hulk. I, I mean. Don't. Even begin to disrespect this guy. Thirty-six-year-old Hulk who's had. He's going to play four more years, Johnny. He's Tom Brady. Look at these scores. Yeah, they're not that great. They're not what they used to be. Come on. He had a really bad end of the year last year, and Minero's just not as good as they are. But so here's here's another issue too. Uh, Minero is conceding more. I don't give a shit about that. Somebody mentioned that earlier in the chat. They were like, "Well, what, what's going to happen when Miami concedes three every game with Messi?" I don't care. Yeah, he's a forward. Even better, let them concede first. And let him go. So Joe and Surface just brought up the same player. And Joe also brought up Buonga. I, I don't think Buonga is on the list. He doesn't score high enough. His peaks aren't high enough. But the other name was Osako. Osako is like the ultimate guy that I have no interest in whatsoever. He like, I'm sorry. I just don't. I, it's hard for me to buy in on a guy and be like, this guy's going to score 60 goals a year. I don't buy in on guys that need to score 60 goals a year. Like you there was somebody else. Who'd you bring up yesterday? Oh, Yuma Suzuki. Yuma. Yuma's like a better version of Osaka to me. But again, <clears throat> Osaka's fine. He's better used as a super rare in like D2. But like sure. I look at this guy, I'm like, great. He scored. He's like the he's like the 35 or 65 guy. Like you get a goal or you don't. And then yeah. if you get you need like four decisives to get a score that really matters. Uh and Raul asked about Matus. Matus is very good. I would put him in the very good list. Like yeah, I would put I think he's just there. Well. I would there's like, and that's why the difference between the mids and the forwards exists too. So the mids, there's like a huge list of like if you go on a list and you say like not good, okay, it's fine. Then you have like good, very good, and like elite. And like the list of midfielders in America has a lot of guys in the like very good and above yeah. category. Like Agreed. guys we're not including here, like Reynoso, Gold, a lot of those guys are really good. Uh, Haber wanted to know about Romello after he dumped him on someone. Poor guy. Yeah, really. Um, and like you said, like midfielders, like Almada. Like, I don't don't trust Almada at all. I don't really trust Alvarado because, I mean, that league, that's not really someone I trust. Yeah, but I mean, there, there are very good players. Like Lowen is really good. Yeah. Morris Zales has had a hell of a season. Good. Herrera's Herrera, been great. Yeah, Lowen's great. I mean, Hani, I don't want anything to do with, but, I mean, he's very good. Uh, yeah. Matt Schlow said last season Reynoso should be included in the elite section. Uh, no, I don't think so. I think last year Reynoso should be in the very good section right below the elite level. Yeah, I think he's – I agree. I agree yeah. with that. And I own his unique, so, like, I'm obviously, like – a fan of him, but I showed this on the screen, but for anyone listening, I had to sit, bring this up. The good places comment, Joe Biden setting the trend of old men saying they have four more years. Shout out to Hulk on that one. But yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where was our list here? You old men just stick together, Laird. Tell you, man, we still need, I'm still waiting for that uh, over 32 division. I don't know why we don't have it. I think you need the over 42 division, Laird. I don't think we have enough players, Sean. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm being serious here. Yeah. No, over 32 division would be fun. A consistent over 32 division would be fun. 
what is Ron Romero asked, what is the best five for you guys this summer? Are we including like best five players, Ron? Or are we saying like best starting lineup oh, in a vacuum question. thing? I think just best five. Uh, if you could so buy five cards, who would you buy? God. I guess. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Is it, or is it like best five or like best five I want to buy? Because like Ahmad is in a best five, but I want no part of an Ahmada card right now. It's just too much of a dumpster fire waiting to happen for me on Ahmada at his current price point. Um, I do kind of wish I bought an Ahmada before the season started because I think that it would have really helped me uh, towards the tail end of the European season. But like with it hitting June, so he said, so Ron wants best team. So I will say that um, – are we including Messi in this? Yeah. Okay. Well, I, are we including Messi, but, like, the fact that he's not going to be there till like, August, are we including, like, Messi as in just, like, Messi? I think you just include Messi, and then we can pretend we, – we can do both, Sean. It's our show. Okay. All right. So, no rules here. for me, goalie, I'm going to take Ichimori. Who are you taking, Laird? Uh, Nishikawa, so I can play him with Schultz. Yeah, that that's the whole thing. All right, so you're taking Nishimori. or Blake, Va- Blake, yeah, Kai Wagner. That's a good one. You're too. taking Nishimori and Schultz. I'm taking Ichimori and Hatanaka. Midfield for me, first one, Carlos Gill. I'm taking Carlos Gill. I assume you're taking Carlos Gill. Yep. Forward, I'm taking Messi. I assume you're taking Messi. Yeah, I think the next one comes down to. Let me see here. One, two. I mean, I think it's. Very clearly, Almada. If we're including Almada, but yeah, I don't want to include him though. If not including Almada, I think for me it would either be Schultz, Cecilia, Zela, or Eduardo. I was going to say it's Zela or Cecilia for me. Yeah, and the only reason I'm saying Eduardo is because of my stack. Yeah. Because it just makes it better, and like when they have elite matchups, it would smack. That that's pretty much like what I would say is like the best lineup possible. Mm-hmm. If ish, yeah. Is there sure enough? I'm taking I mean, there is. Possible. I think, but yeah, like, is there enough upside with the double defender? Yeah, but it's not going to show. But yes, I mean, there you don't have tons of games with them playing together, but like. No, well, that's true too. When they when they really eat, sometimes they really eat. Yeah, that's fair. I'm not saying I would do that. Like again, it's all matchup dependent, right? But like, I would definitely consider it. Like, so two games ago against uh, Osaka, but this was the game Elkura started. But like, you Elkura had 74, Hatanaka had 70, Eduardo had 99. Like that that does enough. But Sessi would be good. The reason I'm taking each more, each more for me is my favorite. The the Marinos goalie is just my favorite goalie in the summer, if possible. Mm-hmm. Makes um, sense. It just is like they have really good AA. So when he gets a clean sheet, he typically ends up with like 75 plus. Um, and when they don't get a clean sheet, it's typically still a decent game. But like, if I look at each more so he started 13 games and he's not really had clean sheets. He only had one clean sheet. Each more he's had two clean sheets. His two clean sheets were 178. And like that's those the sort scores. of scores you're gonna get. And he's had he, in those 13 games, he's had he's conceded in 11 of them, and seven of them he's still got 50 or so or better. So it's just it's just a good card that's always going to be stable that has really high upside and a, and a good floor from a goalie perspective. Yeah, I think that's fair. I like uh, Clement and Andy were mentioning that the Saudi Arabia is now becoming the burn mechanism for so rare, which is fun. That is sad at the same time. Now that Messi's going, I have no interest in Saudi Arabia getting covered. Oh, I do. You we, need, uh, we need we need Chicago Fire Sacks to come off. back, Laird. Who? Oh, well, Madron now. Huh? Madron. We need Madron to come back to life. No thanks. I don't think Benzema and N'Golo Kante are enough to get anybody to care. Yeah, I don't care about weird. Benzema. Benzema is weird one to me because like just no one cares about him except for Zarkipu. Zarkipu's here. Zarkipu cares, but like Benzema is just like someone that's like 
elite, like elite for a while, but just no one really cares about him. Did he really need to go now too? Like one more year? And no, so I, can... well, maybe because you never know how long that Saudi money is going to last in terms of like giving it to someone. Like I, I mean, it hurts Real Madrid really bad. Like I really think they yeah. need a year. And he says if you cover Saudi Arabia, it reduces the cost of every player on the platform. Except those in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. It's yeah, so to your question, Laird, of the topic of the conversation of the show today, do you need the elite level cards when there are not many? And the answer to me is yes. You need more of the elite level guys in a situation where there are less elite level guys because you don't have as many matchups to play in the summer. And a guy like Carlos Gill is really good against almost anyone. And that just doesn't happen in the summer. In the summer, it's very hard to find guys that are like very good in almost all games because of the parity in the MLS. And it's difficult to have guys that are that strong every game. I'm trying to think of like realistically, there are maybe three games in the season for Carlos Hill where you're like, ah, I don't know if I want, like, but you still play him anyway. Okay. Who, what, what are the three games you're not excited about Carlos Gill? I was thinking at Philly. Okay. And then the other ones were literally travel related. Like okay. Vancouver. Does he want to go all the way to Vancouver and play on the turf? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So at Philly for Gill, he had 40. That was the game he got injured and played 35 minutes. That was the game he got injured and played 35 minutes. And got a yellow. Actually, he was at like 45 and got the yellow card on the bench. So On the bench, yeah. Okay, last game against Philly last year had 60 with no decisive. Game before that at home had 75. Uh, game before that at Philly, he subbed on. Game before that at Philly, he had 80 with no decisive. Wow. I mean, we're talking uh, about three years ago now? Game uh, 2020, yeah. Game before that against yeah. Philly at Philly, he had ago. 95 with two decisives. So yeah, I don't think that three three years ago Philly is the Philly that we know now. Ron Romero just asked what I think about Kai Hoberts moving to Real Madrid. I don't know what Real Madrid's doing. I don't understand how you've watched Kai Hoberts and decided that's the guy you're bringing in to to be the guy, but is what it is. I mean, and he's going to be better there than he was at Chelsea because he's going to score more assuming he plays. Um, it, I mean, granted, it's also impossible to be worse, right? Like he had a, a zero AA and got a decisive like once every three months. So like it can't be worse, but he's not going to be a good card. still. he probably, he won't be very viable still, um, but he'll be better. Um, all right. So yeah. So like, I mean, that's the thing with like Gil, right. Is there's just very few spots where you're just like repulsed enough. And the issue is, is like, you still play him typically because even when he's in a bad matchup, if he gets a decisive, you're still looking at 80 to 90 a lot of the time. Yeah, And that's just the thing with Gil. That's why he ends up in priority lineups most all the time. Same thing with Messi, right? It's like, you're like, this guy gets me a decisive. I'm getting like 80 to 90 points from him. And if he doesn't, the lineup's not dead. That's the type of guy you play in those type of lineups. I remember how pissed off you got um, during this spell here for Messi. It was a four-game spell without a decisive. And everyone was like, this guy's not that good. And you were like, he's literally got like 25 AA in yeah. every game. I wouldn't this say I got elite. mad. It was more I was just letting people know they were morons, Laird. You were mad. You were personally offended. I was letting people know they were morons. I should have actually... And then he was wait he just second. waited until we saw him, Sean. One second. And then yeah. he had to get the his... Laird. One second. All right. He had to get his 98 in Inter-Miami. He was waiting for Sean to show up so that he could have his big game. Joe Ducey is saying, I missed the goalkeepers on the list. Any chance we could see those? I will be happy to show you the goalkeepers on this list, Joe. Because there are none of them. We don't consider any goalies elite. It's as simple as that. They're all just crap shoots. Sean was trying to make the case for Ichimori, who... Right. Back there. <laughs> so, uh, Sean just put on a Carlos Hill jersey backwards so we could see the Carlos Hill on the... Yeah, I mean, right. got to respect the goat, Laird. <laughs> got to respect the goat. That's a I mean, great jersey. I do like that it's the full name, too. I do, too. Yeah. Anyway. Just get the point across nice and well. So, yeah, yeah. as Joe sees, the, these are the goalies on the list. Um, to be fair, this would be the goalies on the list if it wasn't 
the summer. That's Actually, right. no, it probably wouldn't be because we'd probably put Courtois on the list. Right? I thought you were going to put Big Lars. Well, he's just a goat. Andy's saying uh, Pass is not bad. That's the, I mean, a lot of people are not bad, but the title is Summer Elites. Yeah. Well, also, he says, he says that in like his L15 is 50, his L40 is 48. Jimmy Maurer. Come I mean, on. there's literally almost every goalie in the world that plays I can pick that uh, would fit that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, just doesn't crack the elite levels. So, how much does the availability of players in the Gold Cup and U uh, U21 Euros affect the summer? Because um, you had I a much stronger opinion about it than I did. I think or, it affects it a decent amount. I don't think you think it affects it much at all, but like there's some really lopsided games and yes, you're going to have some DNPs, but like, there's going to be some games where like the USA is going to play Nicaragua. They're probably going to win like five nil or something. And there's going to be guys on the team that put up massive score lines. Yeah. So, see, I was looking at it that like, I was considering it of if all of the players that we expect to play play and the likelihood of that is low, I think. With Gold Cup, the Euros maybe, I, I don't have never once considered following U21, so I don't know. But my thought was, is there anyone who would not be on our summer elite list who now moves into it because they have utility? Maybe. And I just don't see who we would be adding. Well, I think, I think your issue too was that you are like, here's the issue. U23, we could show the U23 forward elite level list for the summer, right? It's the same as your goalie list. Like, there's no one. Right. So you're now adding guys that are going to be at least usable pieces that are, are pretty important. And also, the thing I disagreed with you with is that you were like, oh, it's the summer. These guys are only going to get, like, three to six games. That's most of the summer. The summer I would consider is, like, a month and a half. Like, it's, it's now until, like, the end of July. That's like the summer. So you're getting some guys that are going to be usable for a good chunk of the summer that definitely have impact. But so like, for example, like USA played Granada. That's like a team they could play here in the Gold Cup. They won 7-1. Pepe had a brace. Aronson had a goal. McKenney had a brace. Pulisic had a goal. Zendejas had a goal. So like, am I saying you're going to play all these guys and you're going to be like, oh my God, I got all these guys? No, because there's going to be some issues and there's going to be some DNPs and yada, 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 but there's going to be some games that are very lopsided where guys are going to play where the USA is going to do well. Cause you're showing games against teams that are much better than the competition that Mexico and the USA are going to play. Like the USA schedule is Jamaica TBD, which is the worst team in the group. That's like a qualifier. That's going to be like Granada yeah. or someone else. And then, Nicaragua, who is worse than every team that you just showed in that list, because that list only consisted of Hex, which is the sure, top sure. teams, and they're going to play teams that are like the 20th to 30 best, best teams in CONCACAF, and let me just tell you, those teams are really bad at the, down there. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not doubting that. I think you're also taking what I said a little too far when I was like, it. so the Euros... It's three to six games, but like two teams will play six. Correct. Like that's it. I'm four thinking, teams will play five. Like most I'm teams thinking, are going to play three to correct. four. I don't think the U23 or the U21 Euros is as much of an impact as I do the, the, um, the, the gold cup. Yeah. The, I mean, the, the, thing, gold cup, the, the way thing, I look at it is that we will have lopsided scores, but not game breaking scores from, individual players see i disagree i think you're gonna have game breaking scores from individual players and you're not gonna have like but nobody knows who they're, who they're gonna be that's the point you have a pretty good idea with some of these teams who those players like i'm pretty confident pulisic is going to be the main guy for the usa and but like honestly what's your expectation like let's say he plays six games like sure. how many games does he a play or start and how many does he actually score 90 it doesn't matter as much from that perspective because it's all about it's all that matters work. It matters. It matters if people are putting up ninety to hundreds. That's what matters. Like if a guy has a game and he puts up fifty, it doesn't matter because like lots of guys go out there and put up fifties. 
what matters is like if Pulisic is going against Granada and you know he's going to start and they win 7-0 and Pulisic has 100. That is a very impactful player on that on that game week. Whenever that game week may be, that's a very impactful player. Not to mention he'll still be U23. Like he's going to play that team that is to be determined that's going to be really bad on June 28th in the Gold Cup. There's a good shot that team is like a team that the USA is like a five plus goal favorite against. That is a very impactful game on so rare for U23 purposes, for the game week purposes, stuff like that. It also seems like a perfect game for Pulisic to get a first half a goal and assist and sit. Sure, and then he has 90 and he's ready to go for the next game. I mean, 90 is a lot for 45 minutes. I just don't not think if that... you have a goal and assist, Laird. It's not that I'm saying that I don't think they're going to be big scores. I just think they're going to be too random for any of us to know. And so it doesn't really change what we do. You're just like, oh yeah, Pulisic has a good matchup. I'm going to play him. And it's like, oh, well, he probably, he, you know, he sits that game because he came up limp in the last, in the first one. It's like, sure. all right, well, yeah, that's happened. Like, I think you're more likely to be more consistent with the K-League than you are with the Gold Cup. Oh, for sure. I mean, the K-League, J-League, all MLS, like, they're all going to be more consistent than than these things because they're definitely, like, they're, they're jamming games in. Like, they have, the, the USA has the CONCACAF Nations League before. Like, in theory, which, is that covered? I didn't think so, but I... I don't remember. I, just, I can't keep up with all this stuff. I, I feel like they just popped, yeah. popped these things but out. CONCACAF Nations League is June 15th. Then if they win the game against Mexico, they would play again, I imagine, on Sunday, the 18th or 19th. Then the Gold, stu- the gold Cup starts the following weekend as well. So there's just like uh, Joe Ducey said, Nations League was not covered. So yeah, yeah. they in theory could play eight games in a month standpoint which goes to your point of like they're going to rotate because that's a lot of games yeah i think i called it a tease before somewhere and i was like that's going to be the problem you're like i have this really great matchup and then you're like oh man like whoever but the issue is like like, like, oh yeah because they have prepared for the summer right people prepared for the summer and they bought they bought jesus ferreira or whatever which i guess is actually a bad example yeah it's fine (laughs) he's gonna be gone at the gold cup or whatever but they bought Jesus Ferreira for the summer to be like a good player or whatever in the summer. Well, now you have other guys that are going to be impactful players in the summer because of these other competitions that are covered. It, it does have an impact. And I do think it is a somewhat substantial impact, but like if the USA plays Mexico, right? Like it's not like the scores are going to be outrageous in that game because exactly. good, it's an even competition. I'm just saying there's now a lot more people that are going to be able to field lineups that weren't fielding lineups before. So there's just a lot of additional entries that are going to be out there. I also have concerns of, over whether Sober actually gives rewards to, like, deal with that. Because in the past, like, when international stuff plays, they basically are like, we have these 20 international games with all these players. You guys are getting a 0% increase on it. <laughs> so, like, is that going to happen? Or are they going to give a 0% increase despite having all these additional active players? Yeah. I how they'll probably do the uh, national team cards again. That'll be fun. No, I the way I was looking at it is is if you prepared for the summer by getting certain players, realistically, nothing changes. Like Correct. you're not being like, man, I shouldn't have gotten this guy. I should have gotten this guy because they have gold cup Correct. or student America. Like. Yes, there's extra utility. That actually might be a bigger one. Although I don't know what those guys do for when there's international play also. But like, I just don't, it's nice that there's more utility, but there are people who are just like so excited now. And it's like, well, you have a lineup. So that's better than not having a lineup. And yes, that means it's technically harder for other people to win. But I just really don't think it's as big as anyone thinks. No, but like there's, it definitely is big because it went from no nothing to like now these all exist. That is a big impact, whether you want to admit it or not. Like lineups are going to have guys from these teams on their, their, in their lineups. And it is impactful. No, I don't think. I think it's more likely we see Pulisic's hundreds with two DNPs, meaning like in the same line. Possibly. Or you're going to see Pulisic hundred with no DNPs and the guy wins a division. And you're like, well, Hey, that wouldn't have happened otherwise. Maybe. So it's, it is impactful. It is a big impact. I just don't like it's. I agree with your assessment that it's not something where like people are like, oh my God, I bought cards for Asian America and this screwed me and I 
just will never win anything now. It's more so like you definitely are hurt if you've prepared for the summer with a lot of Asian and American cards because now a lot of other people are getting cards to utilize during the summer. Like, I'll give a good example. U23 goalies. In the summer, we talked about it last week. There's like three. There's like three. And now there's going to be like nine that you can use. And again, In none of them are good. What? In a two-week span. But that's that two week Japan and Korea are off for times during the summer layer. So like you just got guys that are now impactful and you usable that didn't exist. So it just turned like, for example, like we talked about how surprised we were by this and uh, all this Roman Celentano from um, Cincinnati, from Cincinnati. He just lost a lot of luster that he had because now for example, like in the summer, I have Kaylee U23 goalies. I have Osako, and I have Chris Brady. Chris Brady's injured currently. If Japan and Asia don't play, I need an American goalie. I might have to go buy a Celentano U23 card. Now, oh, all of a sudden, Belgium plays during that game week. I have Vandevoort. All right, I don't need to go buy something. I'll just play my Vandevoort. Um, so... It's a lot more impactful than I think you're leading into. I don't think it's like a groundbreaking, earth-shattering, like, oh my. It's not like if we added like European qualifiers where like Portugal's an eight-goal favorite and you're like, Ronaldo's showing up for this shit. And you just are like, he's We do have those. Yeah, we have those. But like, that's not here. But it's like, you're locking him in for like 100 because there's just no way Ronaldo's not coming to play against someone like this. Um, So... Anyways, like I, I think there's definitely an impact. How much of one? It's not like we're throwing out. It's not like we're bringing a bunch of people that are like. It, it's not like we're bringing a bunch of crushers that are going to average ninety points for a month and just smack their face off. But <laughs> we've added a lot of players that now have utility that did not have utility that hurt the utility that other players had that were special because of that time of the year. Yeah. Clement saying, I imagine people buying Kavlina and Katarski without knowing which of them will play for Croatia, and that makes me smile. They both could play. We don't. We have no idea. One could play one game, one could play the other. TS United just asked, Is, isn't Drew Isi also an elite forward? Uh, absolutely not. Drew Isi was a horseshoe up the ass forward last year that just got bit. He was basically like poor man's Hani Mukhtar at this point, I think. Man, like his teams is not good. Yeah, I'm not saying he's bad. Again, he's he's good. He's a good option to have. He's definitely not elite. Like Jerusi is not an elite level uh, American forward. Oh, he is back, sort of. He's subbed in the last two games. I imagine he'll start this weekend. But like, yeah, you see all those sixties. There's a reason why he had a lot of sixties. Grant, that was a mid card. But like, again, fine. Like, if you have that guy when he's not injured and playing, he's fine. Yeah. Matt, I will sell you the Super Rare at 3 ETH. Let me know when you want it. We'll happily send that over to you. Come on, 1.3. was a lot, Or that's probably not the forward. No, it's probably the midfield card. Last one. Oh, your name got one a week ago. Hmm. Someone believes. Anyway, yeah, I wouldn't put him on there either. Um, let's see. Yeah, okay. You convinced me that it has more than a zero, more than a half percent chance of affecting something. I'm not willing to go above K League's five percent, though. It's what? Wait, what are you talking about? I'm willing to accept that it that the addition of I actually think Euros is a bigger addition than Gold Cup because Gold Cup's such a shit show. But you think it's the opposite? But I think it's the opposite because I think there's going to be more mismatches. I looked at the Gold Cup or the the Euro U21s and it looked like most teams are pretty comparable and it should be decently good games. Mm -hmm. Whereas the Gold Cup has some major mismatches that will happen. Yeah. I think there's probably also a good number of people who may have Euro U21 players, but not enough for a lineup. Like maybe they have Vandevort, but they don't have oh, the others. Hilariously enough, Laird, I have not looked at much, but I've seen a couple teams posted. I almost have a Belgium Euro U21 rare pro lineup. Like I almost have like a full lineup. And they I have, I have, have group. what? And they won't get out of the group. Possibly. They could. They, they could get out of the group. But I mean, they're in the group. So, yes. I have, I have a Verbruggen who likes, likely starts a net. I have a Jean Paul Van Heck who likely starts a center back, apparently. I have Graven Birch who there's no way Graven Birch is at this tournament. Wait, didn't you say Belgium? No, I said. Uh, 
I said Netherlands. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. To be I fair, think to be fair, I probably I don't let me pull up the Nether, let me pull up the Belgium roster. Um, and I could probably have similar. Um, all right. Let's get the Belgian roster here, Laird. No, Harry Trades did it for us. Harry Trades, perfect. If you look at Harry Trades, finally pulling some weight. But oh, I literally so like this is the midfield yeah, expectancy yeah. for the Netherlands, Laird. Mijnons or Eklund Camp, Gravenberch, Kenny Taylor. I literally have all four of them. Okay, who do we got? Um, so Verbruggen. Oh, I saw. So yeah, you're on the Netherlands. So I have a Verbruggen. Isn't? Were you just have, talking about the Netherlands? What? I thought you. That's no, who you, you were, were talking about. Look up Belgium, Laird. But you mentioned Midnans and someone Midgenans else. Midnans is Dutch. And Gravenberch. Gravenberch is also Dutch. Yeah, but I'm saying you you were asking about Belgium. I said I might have a Belgium team too. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. So I have, yeah. So like I have a Verbruggen. A, I actually have a Dalinga. I have a Tees Dalinga. If he starts, I have an Eklund Camp, a Gravenberch Super Rare, a Van Heck Rare, uh, a Midnans Super Rare. A oh, you should have sold your uh, whatever this guy. I shouldn't have told. I shouldn't have sold my million man hope. Yeah, go look up Belgium. Let's see. Let's see what happens. But so, like you say, you're saying people don't have Belgium's one to the right leg. Um, so I uh, Vandervoort's gonna start. I have Vandervoort. I have a Zeno de Boss super. I'm assuming he definitely starts. Um, yeah, I have no idea. I have a Vermeer in rare. He's for sure gonna start. I have a Bakioka rare. He's very possibly gonna start. I have a the Cadillac rare, and there's no way he doesn't start. I can't imagine he'd be there if he wouldn't start. And I have a Yorby rare. So, like, there's a good shot. Like, Maybe I can finally get out. some minutes. There's a there's a shot I can literally put out full U21 or U23 rare pro lineups with this. How confident are you that they all start? Oh, who knows? I haven't looked into it yet. I yeah. just found out about two hours ago, Laird. I don't have time for that shit right now. That's all you have, Sean. Come on, Laird. You know I don't have time right now. Yeah, I actually know you don't now. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> hmm. But yeah, I mean, it's going to be funny when you're like, oh, man, Chris Brady or Bart for Bruggen? Well, I'm pretty – I mean, I know Vandevoort's going to start, right? Like, I know Vandevoort's the goalie. Like, that one I'm positive. About. I don't even know that. The Dutch team, I'm not that. sure. I don't know if it'll be Sherpin or for Bruggen. I assume it's for Bruggen, but it could be Sherpin. Um, but, like – like, for example, right? Like, there's no way Ryan Gravenberch is going to this tournament without being like, Gravenberch, you're going to be the guy. We're going to play you every game. So, like, there's no way that, that, that he's not the guy. Yeah. I'll I have to look through this. I, I know like a, lot of, a lot of the thinking of what makes sense and not what is definitely going to happen. Like, I feel like that's going to happen a lot in this tournament. We're going to be like, man, I can't believe whoever the player is didn't start. And it's like, well, yeah. There's going to be games for Chile. Unfortunately, you get to join in on on Cherokee season for France. That's unfortunate. Well, Jonathan unfortunate? says that it is Verbruggen 100%. Yeah, I figured it was going to be Verbruggen. Man, of the two of us, I'm the only one who's bought a Cherokee Rare. So, Yeah, I bought a Cherokee Super Rare, so technically I get a Trump you layered. You did. Technically. I threw out the Trump um, card. Yeah, it's it's... There's lots of guys. Like, I mean, I don't, I don't, I haven't looked enough into it yet, right? Like, I assume the French group's pretty shit. Because I, I look, yeah, the French team is going to be really good. So, the French team's really good, but I'm pretty sure the French group is relatively not great. I'm assuming. Yeah, no one knows, knows who um, is going to start in goal, too, which is kind of funny for this one. Well, Messlier, it's, I mean, you know, it's one of the two. It's either Chevalier or Messlier. It should be Chevalier. Messlier has been horrendous. There it is. They should be, but Messlier, <laughs> Messlier plays more. But I don't need to play him. I have I have Vandevoort layered. Mm -hmm. I don't need to know. I mean, I'm gonna tell you about you. Just other people who still. Yeah, like I'm assuming that group's pretty weak. Like I looked at the Italian team, I think, and I was like, that's not great. Like, I mean, it has Ravella and it has like Canali, but that's it though. Those two. Yeah. So the Norwegian team, I'm assuming, is not great. Yeah. Like, is this actually like, Moise Keen? I would assume so. He's... How is this guy not 35 by now? Well, so here's the thing. He's apparently, apparently, layer. It started when. It counted your age when qualifying started, which I don't even know. When it started in 1996? Like, my God. I don't know when that was, but, like, uh, Nico Mantle is on the German team. He turned, like, 24 in, like, two months. He has that excellent late July birthday, doesn't he? Something like that? Yeah, but, like, he's 23 in the U21 yeah. Euros. Yeah, I don't – I think you're – somebody mentioned something about how you're allowed to have an older player or two. I don't know. 
who knows? I, like I said, I haven't had time to look into all this. I was going to say, we're, no, nobody's here for our scouting of the Euro U23, U21 yeah. tournament. Like, I'll I'll look through the, the previous games and see who started for who during previous uh, qualifying. Sure. Like, that should give you a good indication. Um, but Johanathan says you need to be older than 2000. So, basically, this is the Euro U23 Euros, right? right. Like, that, that's pretty much effectively what this is. Like, there's just no way grass goes this It's kind tournament. of funny that you had to qual- qual- uh, qualify this. Like, you need to be less than 2,000. And it was like, yeah. you meant, like, the year 2,000. Yeah. To be under 2,000 years old, and you can play. Laird, Laird finally found somewhere where he's eligible, guys. Here we go. Let's go. Be setting Pulisic up for goals left and right. Oh, wait. We're not European. Oh, well. Uh, you got anything else? No, yeah, no. that Carlos, backwards Carlos Hill jersey is just great. I know. Did it just for you, Laird. Yeah. Had a wardrobe change during the, sh- the show day. Look at that. It's a big one. Big one. If anybody wasn't w- watching this one and listening, man, you should watch this one. Thank you to everybody for joining us. If you guys haven't hit the like button on the video, I think there are more people currently watching than there are likes, which is always weird to me because it literally takes one click to like, but- to like the video. So please do so. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, hit that as well. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow with Andy for So Rare Andrews and then Friday for Off Topic. And then I think... I actually probably, don't even want to guarantee a regular schedule next Probably week. back to normal Monday, we'll but we'll see. I'll, we'll I'll see. let you know. I'll let you know. Yeah, exactly. We'll let you know. There's most likely going to be a stream every day. So if you just watch them all, you'll be fine. And uh, if you only come for some, just watch the other ones too. It's not that hard. Anyway, thank you to everybody for joining us, and um, we'll see you next time.